Ooh, BYD is not looking good compared to Tesla right now. BYD has just lost the throne. It didn't sell nowhere near as many EVs as Tesla did in Q1. BYD only sold about 300,000 BEVs in Q1. So BYD only outsold Tesla in Q4 of 2023, which implies that BYD's dethroning of Tesla may have been just a short-lived fluke. So at worst, Tesla will beat BYD by 30% and more likely maybe by even 40%. But of course, we won't have headlines like Tesla outsells uh, number two global EV automaker by 40% roughly. And we now have the Tesla compiled survey consensus, and that stands at 443,000. The median, though, is at 431,000. Gary is at 415,000. And the 2024 expectations are at 2 million for the whole year. And I don't quite think there is a bigger bull than Omar, and even he thinks that the compiled consensus is too high. Seems like Tesla will miss that, he says. But putting things in perspective, this is much much higher than how many EVs BYD will deliver. Troy just released his estimate. He is at 409,000. His production estimate is 430,000. Just because Troy's track record is fairly decent doesn't mean that he will definitely be right. And I'll be happy with anything over 410,000, basically. And in Q2 of last year, when we got these results, Tesla stock rallied quite a bit because the deliveries came in substantially higher above Troy's estimate. And for those that say that Troy is not good at tracking deliveries, please show me who is better. There have been a few people that have performed better than Troy one quarter or even two quarters. But overall, Troy has been pretty good. And if you want to compare Troy's performance to someone else, please show me all of their prediction history, not just one quarter or two quarters. And then finally, if Tesla comes in at above 423,000, I would be really happy because that would mean positive year over year growth. However, if you do come below that number, it won't be the first time that it happened where year over year Tesla faced negative growth. It happened during COVID, but that was a bit different. This time we also had price cuts. If you compare Tesla's pricing to it one year ago, we also have $7,500 upfront EV credits in the US. The Sabatron halo effect is supposed to be starting now with some Sabatrucks on the streets, but there are not that many yet. Gary says that Tesla could be facing both a narrative change that Tesla's volumes are declining and a miss. That said, investors will look past the Model 3 Highland Fremont year-over-year -year delivery decline of about 30,000 units as a one-time thing. One can also argue that Tesla's 29% decline year to date already reflects a Q1 delivery miss. The bottom line is if Q1 deliveries come in above last year's Q1 of 423,000, Tesla would likely rally even with a miss versus consensus. Yeah, especially with Troy's estimate being so low. Also today, Tesla did increase the price of the Model Y by $1,000, which certainly I would think have pulled some deliveries from Q2 into Q1. AJ's estimate is at 422,600. Only back in Q4 of 2021, Detroit and the consensus have more of a gap than this quarter. Troy is in green here and this is the consensus. There does seem to be a bit of a silver lining based on what Gary Black is posting here. Tesla reports Q1 deliveries this week. Expectations are rock bottom. That's likely bullish. If you look at some of the biggest Tesla bulls, they are not expecting high deliveries. For example, Dan Ives expects 426,000. Morgan Stanley 425,000. A Tesla bear Tony Saganaki expects 426,000. An investor's business daily rise at Actual predictions appear to be around 423,000. So I personally think this is really the number to focus on. This is how many deliveries as I had in Q1, by the way, of last year. Coming back to BYD, actually year over year, BYD is up 13.4%. So it's not bad news for BYD to have delivered 300,000 BEVs. Also remember that in China, Q1 is really bad because of the Chinese New Year. For now, BYD doesn't see Tesla as a competition. It is taking share away from legacy automakers. And with a vehicle priced at $9,700, it is taking share away from these legacy automakers. Yeah, at this point, BYD can't really release a new 
cheaper model i mean ten thousand dollars for a vehicle i think that's pretty much the bottom at this point tesla though on the other hand can release many more cheaper models in the future the range on that cheap vehicle of course is not very good but it's all right keep in mind that 190 mile range is cltc and epa is much more realistic cltc is about 35 percent higher than epa and we know that even epa is not really realistic when it comes to real world driving so in that ten thousand dollar vehicle i wouldn't really expect to go further than 100 miles until i wanted to charge again it makes it for a great city vehicle but i would never want to take a road trip in that edge case has provided us with some great fsd clips he says this one is a must watch all rules in this roundabout are broken and it's just a free for all merge fest in order to get through this chaos fsd had to number one ignore the yield sign to enter the roundabout ignore any lane marking squeeze through bumper to bumper maze of cars and number four there's also some random guy running across the street pushing a disabled car <laughs> this sounds difficult i want to see it now so we're gonna go straight like that and there's quite a bit of traffic from all of these directions let's see我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操我操
load reduction for weight as the diesel trucks running this route. And it's not just at a lower cost, it is doing so at substantially lower operating cost. Now it's about scale. This is getting me excited. The new EPA rules impose stricter emission rules, which should push manufacturers faster into electric trucks, benefiting Tesla. But Tesla first needs to build these trucks. An update on the semi-production would be nice on the next earnings call. 31 countries have surpassed a pivotal EV tipping point when 5% of new car sales are purely electric. This threshold signals a start of mass adoption after which technological preferences rapidly flip reports Bloomberg. I believe the US is in green here. If the US catches a trend, a quarter of new cars could be fully electric in 2026. Over the past 18 months, I have consistently and methodically warned with words and with examples about what Elon Musk foray into politics and Twitter was doing would do to Tesla's demand. I have argued that Elon's personal brand is inextricably linked to Tesla's brand. I think to some point that's true. Indeed, this survey proves the point. Caliber's consideration score for Tesla provided exclusively to Reuters fell to 31% in February, less than half its high of 70% in November 2021 when it started tracking consumer interest in the brand. Tesla's consideration score fell 8 percentage points from January alone, even as Caliber scores for Mercedes, BMW and Audi, which produce gas as well as EV models, inched up during that same period, reaching 44 to 47 percent. The survey shows that 83 percent of Americans connect Musk with Tesla. Reuters spoke to five marketing, polling, and car experts. We said controversy surrounding Musk's increasingly right-wing politics and public statements are weighing on Tesla's brand and demand. And James continues here, the damage is done at this point and I think the worst is behind us. I think I agree with that. Demand for Tesla vehicles has found a new equilibrium. Other factors will play a more significant role in the demand-supply relationship movement moving forward. From that same Reuters article, you can also see Tesla's reputation in global markets. For example, in China, in 2024, Tesla's reputation supposedly has improved compared to 2023. In Sweden, though, that's not the case. And we know that's because of the protests and the strike. Interestingly, in Germany, Tesla's reputation slightly improved, but this is probably within the margin of error. So we'll just call it flat. France, Canada, and the US, all of these countries saw a decline in Tesla's reputation. I couldn't find the sample sizes of these polls though. There's a new FSD review. This one is not exactly positive. I do need to point out a few things first. This person says that he or she has over 11,000 shares, which would be about $2 million, and it's version 12.3.2.1. What is a bit interesting to me, though, is um, when I see a Tesla stock bull who has a lot of money in Tesla and has not tried FSD ever until now. I personally, I find that a bit weird, unless $2 million for this person is not much money. Pause and read if you'd like to see all of the issues that were experienced during the drive. It is an FSD trial, so I expect to hear more about the FSD driving experience from this account. This person says, I don't think I will cough up the $199 per month to continue it after the trial. However, Maybe it's more of a control thing, and this account admitted that as well. It does take some getting used to the software. You don't want to just let it drive the car at first. However, it was pointed out that on the highway, the vehicle is amazing. The vehicle was also driven on the assertive mode. I personally don't drive FSD on the assertive mode. In the meantime, Chuck Cook says that he got FSD V12.3.3, and this is a first impressions drive. It was over 40 minutes. Same route as he always does. And there were zero interventions, zero disengagements for the first time ever. So this is a major milestone that Tesla has just achieved. And here's someone trying FSD for the first time. Green light, let's see if it goes. Go, 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 yeah! Tesla needs to add some more data related to emergency vehicles, especially fire trucks on a two-lane road. V12.3.2.1. How many more are we going <laughs> to add after uh, that? Failed to yield for a fire truck with full lights. I think this is a pretty simple and easy problem to solve. Tesla just needs more data. I don't think this is a priority for Tesla yet. 
Tesla can add this much later. I have been looking for clips showing up as DV12 making mistakes. I found this one. I'm not going to show you the actual clip because I have seen this channel issue a copyright strike before. So just to be safe, I'll, I'll just tell you what happens here. The car was going pretty slow at four miles an hour, and it was going towards this concrete wall. This is when a takeover happened. I'm not sure if Tesla would have braked uh, at the very last moment. Maybe it could have stopped before bumping into the concrete wall. Uh, Tesla was not trying to park here. It thought, I guess, that uh, this was uh, a road. And in the last moment, Tesla did start turning the steering wheel. So it realized, oh, I'm about to make a mistake. I don't think anyone would have been hurt, but the vehicle would have been <laughs> damaged quite a bit. And of course, to find the worst clips, you would go to Dan O'Dowd, right? Well, here's what he posted. So the vehicle is accelerating here and then there was a disengagement. Now the worst part about this one is that the vehicle actually accelerated. That was definitely a bad disengagement. So V12 is not perfect yet. No one, I don't think anyone would have been hurt. Maybe some discomfort. Yeah, there would have been damage done to both vehicles, which would have been not great at all, but I would have expected more clips and worse clips. There's a compilation video of about five minutes um, showing FSD's mistakes. Not every clip is a disengagement, by the way. Some of the clips is just quite uncomfortable or there's something that's not great, but uh, this is the worst disengagement that I have found. I personally would have definitely disengaged there, but we don't know for sure what would have actually happened. Maybe FSD would have realized what's happening and would have probably went right. But for comfort, this was definitely not good. And by the way, it's not like humans don't ever make critical mistakes, some really silly mistakes. So if so far that's the worst that you can find, knowing that FSD is not better than human driving yet. Look, I expected more bad things. It doesn't seem like a lot of things are posted here. And I'm pretty sure he's working very hard on finding every single bad moment and posting it on his X feed. There are definitely some, but I'm just saying I would have expected more. If you recorded everything that each human driver does, for a week, a few weeks, you would find a lot of moments. Oh, how stupid were you to do that? Moments like that. What is undeniable though is that FSD is making progress and it's making a lot of progress as Chuck showed here. And currently the rate of progress is the most important thing. I would also expect more bad clips as FSD V12 goes to a wide release because for the simple fact that more people are going to use the software. So even if the software is getting better, you might still see more clips of FSD doing some silly things. But at the same time, I would also expect more people posting, oh, I just had a two hour no interventions drive. I just had a five hour no interventions drive. I've been driving for a few days without any interventions. I would expect more things like that as well. So you have to see the whole picture. And remember, if every single vehicle in the US used FSD right now, and if FSD was as good as human driving, we would have over 100 new stories every single day reporting about people dying in FSD crashes. When inevitably someone passes away while driving on FSD, I'm sure that will happen many times in the future. We need to have a metric. How many miles have been driven on FSD? And if it falls within a normal range of how often people usually pass away while driving, we shouldn't make a big deal about it. I mean, each one of these is going to be a tragedy, but we have to be realistic. We now know that 55% of all of the Tesla vehicles in Canada and the US have FSD V12. I am, of course, in that 45% still. So I am in the minority now. Tesla not only increased the price today in the US, but it also increased the price in China, just as promised 12 days ago. It's a $700 increase, so it's not nothing. And the price in the US has slowly but steadily 
been increasing lately. The Model 3 rear-wheel drive price though remains stable. It has not increased really, except for this one increase a long time ago, but after that we had a decrease. In China, Tesla sort of just lowered the price by a little bit. Previously, black paint was free, but it's no longer free. Now, the stealth gray option, which used to cost 12,000 yuan, that is now free, but the black paint option now costs 8,000 yuan, not 12,000 like the stealth gray did. However, depending on how popular the black paint is going to be compared to the stealth gray, this could actually be more profitable for Tesla overall if the black paint option is going to be much more popular than the stealth gray option was before. Someone posted that Sabotruck refunds outpace orders in January and February. However, I think this is probably an April Fool's joke. There's a decent chance that Tesla is about to unveil the Model 3 performance, which should now be called ludicrous probably. Photos showing several of the new refreshed Model 3s under wraps outside an event space potentially in Southern California. These are likely all ludicrous Model 3s. Yeah, judging from this picture, it looks like the unveil is imminent. Check this out, the next generation platforms of China's two leading ADAS brands have turned to pure vision, may retain a LiDAR transition with greatly weakened performance. Good luck putting 6 million vehicles on the roads to compete with Tesla when it comes to collecting data. So if people using LiDAR are now admitting that LiDAR is not going to work, what do you think that means for Tesla? When these people that have invested in LiDAR realize that all of these other new companies cannot compete with Tesla's data advantage, these investors are likely to look at Tesla and say, huh, oh, should we invest in Tesla? From a fundamentalist perspective, James thinks that Q1 will be Tesla's worst financial quarter maybe ever going forward relative to all future quarters. This implies that Tesla stock should bottom somewhere between the Q1 print later in the month and the Q2 delivery report. Yes, we will see. Who knows with this stock? I think the Toyota BZ4X is the best EV on the market, says Sawyer. Obviously, this is an April Fool's joke. And we all know that Fisker is much better. Fisker is the best EV automaker. And their stock is really good at dropping. Emmett Peppers just made a bit of a prediction for tomorrow. Very possible Tesla's lackluster Q1 delivery numbers that will be reported very soon will be a sell the rumor by the news event for Tesla stock. Oh, and this does confirm that indeed the Model 3 Ludicrous is about to be released. No one before captured a photo like this of the Ludicrous Model 3. 